Clue 4 is here, and we have another mohair dare moment. If you want to incorporate a little bit of mohair into your final Clue 4, we're going to pick up some stitches, and there's a stitch called the Tiny Bobbles Stitch. And during this section, for the contrast color, you could use your mohair instead of your contrast color for those tiny bobbles. Just one strand of mohair instead of your contrast color could be your mohair dare. I used about four grams of mohair for this section, so you don't need a lot of mohair. A little bit goes a long way for the contrast color of the tiny bobbles. Or if you wanna hold the mohair together with your contrast color, even if this is your contrast color, that would be really cool, holding a different color mohair together with it. So you could do a marled mohair moment. So hold one strand of lace weight mohair together with your contrast color, and you'll get a marled mohair dare during the tiny bobbles. So that's the final section of uh, the shawl. You can skip ahead to the end of the video to see what the final shawl looks like. And then if you just do that last section, we're gonna do some slip stitches and tiny bobbles. That could be the end of your shawl and you could finish your shawl and have a smaller version or continue to the wavy border. I'll show you how to knit the wavy border in this video and that's adding some stripes and waves to the end of the shawl and you can customize that by knitting as many waves as you like. If you've got a lot of yarn and like those big schlankets, then knit up all your colors. If you've got three or four mohair dares, you could add extra mohair in the wavy border. So keep on going and customizing your shawl and uh, skip ahead to see what that final version looks like. Section nine, tiny bobbles and slip stitches. For this section, I'm going to do another mohair dare. So I'm gonna use a similar mohair color to my contrast color for all of the tiny bobbles sections. So if you wanna do a mohair dare, I recommend doing it for the tiny bobbles and you could hold it together, one strand of mohair together with your contrast color and that would be really fun. But to begin, we need to use the main color and look at your work from the very first section, those semicircles. So I'm looking at it, it kind of looks upside down. Before we were looking at our work like this, doing that border, we finished that border. So flip it upside down. And this is this edge here. I'm looking here at this corner, this I-cord corner. This is from that garter stitch stripes one corner and then we have some semicircles one two three this is just the orientation that I'm looking at so we're gonna start from that garter stitch stripes one corner this is what you want your work to look like all the way here so pick up and knit three stitches from the I-cord corner of garter stitch stripes one so that's right here. I'm going to pick up the I-cord stitches first. And let's just get, it doesn't matter exactly where. We just need to get one, two, three strands of yarn from that main color I-cord corner. It doesn't matter exactly which strands, as long as you get three at that corner using the main color we're gonna we pick those up and now we're going to knit them one two three now we're going to pick up stitches along this entire selvage from those first sections pick up and knit two from the main color selvage of semicircle one so this is the main color. Do you see these main color selvage stitches? We want to get two of those. One and two. So make sure your second one is that main color stitch that's right next to the contrast color stitch. So we got our three I-cord stitches picked up and knit two from the main color selvage of semicircle one. Make one. Pick up and knit two stitches from the contrast color selvage of semicircle one. So that's these next two stitches. One, two, and then make one using the backwards loop cast on method. We're going to do that five times. So that was the first time. 
we need to do it twice, three times, four times, five times, and then you'll be at that center bit of the main color. So pick up and knit two, make one from the main color. Pick up and knit two, make one from the contrast color. Knit two main color stitches, make one. Pick up and knit two contrast color stitches, make one. Pick up and knit two, make one. Pick up and knit two, make one. So we've done that once, twice, three times, four times. Here's the fifth repeat. Pick up and knit two, make one from the contrast color. Pick up and knit two, make one from from the main color, I just did from the main color, and then pick up and knit two, make one from the contrast color, from my light color there. So this is what it looks like when you do that five times. You picked up stitches all the way, and now you're here at that center main color section. Pick up and knit two stitches from the main color selvage of semicircle one. So we need to get two more here. Make one. Pick up and knit two stitches from the center cast on edge of semicircle one. So just anywhere here along the center, you can get two stitches. Let's get right into the middle here. There's no right or wrong, just any two stitches near the center of that semicircle. Make one. Pick up and knit two stitches from the main color selvage of semicircle one. So get, do you see these final two selvage stitches? That's what we're going into now. One, two, make one. Pick up and knit two stitches from the contrast color selvage of semicircle one. Make one. Pick up and knit two stitches from the main color selvage of semicircle one, make one. So we're gonna do that five times, contrast color, main color. Two here, two there. Three times, four times, and five times. So all the way from here to that last semicircle edge. So we're picking up and knitting two. make one, get two main color stitches, and then make one, go into the contrast color, make one. If you hold the yarn in your right hand for all of these pickups, you dive in, wrap the yarn around and pull it through. Get that next main color. I go into both legs of each selvage stitch and then make one. Pick up and knit two from the contrast color. Make one. Pick up and knit two from the main color. Make one. So keep on going until you get two from that final make one, from this final stripe, from that final edge of the semicircle. And here are my final two main color stitches from semicircle one. Pick up and knit two, make one. So that was the end of the repeat inside the parentheses where I did that five times. And now the final line of this paragraph says, 
pick up and knit two stitches from the cast on edge of garter stitch stripes two. So this is garter stitch stripes two, this triangle there, that was garter stitch stripes one. So we just need to get two stitches from the cast on corner of this section. There we go. Pick up and knit two, make one from garter stitch stripes two. Now the next paragraph says, pick up and knit two stitches from the main color selvage of semicircle two. That's the next semicircle. And then you make one, pick up and knit two stitches from the contrast color selvage of semicircle two, make one five times. So basically we're doing the same type of pickup along the semicircle two. So let's get these two main color. If you're ever unsure exactly where to go into to pick up, it doesn't really matter as long as you're getting a couple of stitches. If you go a little bit further in, that's okay, but try to get into just the two legs of each stitch like this. Pick up and knit two, make one. Pick up and knit two, make one. Pick up and knit two, make one. So follow the instructions closely. As you pick up and do that five times inside the parentheses, that will bring you to here. Ooh, this is the fifth time and then you reach that center bit where you pick up and knit two, make one. You pick up and knit two from the center, make one. Pick up and knit those final two main color edges, make one. So follow the lines really closely and you're doing the same types of pickups for each semicircle. And then you get two stitches from each of these intersections of the garter stitch stripes. So pay close attention to this pickup don't worry about it too much because even if you're off a couple stitches or even if you're off five stitches or so, you can make up for it on the next wrong side row. We can always sneak in some extra increases or decreases. Just keep on following this pick up and knit to make one rhythm. And you can maybe cross off the lines of your patterns as you work each line or each paragraph to help you remember where you are and if you want to place some stitch markers in your work maybe at the end of each paragraph if you place a stitch marker that could help you mark okay that was where i finished that line or that paragraph so take it slow once we finish picking up it'll go quicker and easier So keep on going and then basically we're going to be picking up stitches all along this edge until we reach that final corner of this garter stitch stripes four section. So we're picking up stitches along all of the semicircles and then we'll stop when you reach that I cord edge over here. So we'll stop right here. I'll see you at the end of this pickup. I'm reaching the end of the row one pickup and I'm doing the final pickup and knit two, make one into the contrast color and the final pickup and knit two, make one into the main color. Stop here and turn to work the wrong side row. Row two, wrong side. You should have 216 stitches after row one. So if you want to, you could do a little stitch count check to make sure you have 216. If you don't, then we can sneak in some extra increases or decreases during row two. So don't worry if you don't have the right stitch count yet, we can fix that easily. Row two, pick up a knit three from the I cord cast on corner of garter stitch stripes four. So that's the I cord corner right here. And just get any three strands of yarn along that I cord corner. Just Pick them up, any three main color strands, 
pick them up and knit them. The yarn is in back. So knit any three strands of yarn along that main color I-cord edge. And then purl to last three stitches. It may be a little messy here with all those ends, but we can weave in some ends to hide any little holes that you see later. If you don't have the right stitch count, you could sneak in an extra increase. At the end of row two, we should have 219 stitches. We just picked up and added three right there, so that's 219 total for row two. But if you don't have 219 stitches now, you could pick up a strand and purl it like this to increase one stitch. So you could do that, or you could do an extra make one a few times along the wrong side row like that to increase. Or if you have too many stitches, you could sneak in a purl two together. You could purl two stitches together like this if you have too many stitches. But make sure you have 219 stitches at the end of row two. At the end of row two, purling to the last three stitches, slip three with yarn in front, row three, right side, knit two, slip, slip, knit, Slip that first stitch knitwise, slip the next stitch knitwise, knit those two together through the back, knit to last three stitches. You should have 218 stitches after row three. If at any time during these next couple rows you check your stitch count and it's not matching what's recommended after the row, then you can sneak in an extra decrease. You could always sneak in an extra knit two together to get back on track, or you could sneak in an extra increase to get back on track. So make sure you have the recommended stitch count at the end of each row. I just finished row four, wrong side. I have four stockinette stitch rows with the main color. 217 stitches are on the needle. I'm gonna use the contrast color for tiny bobbles pattern repeat row five. This is a time for a mohair dare. If you want to use a similar color to your contrast color, that would look really pretty. Or you could use an entirely new color, like a bright pink held together with your contrast color, or a brown or an orange. So get creative. You could have a contrasting mohair dare, or you could use a very similar color. So I just have one strand of each yarn, and I'm going to hold them double throughout this section, keep the same needle size, and this is just going to add a little bit of mohair fluff, a mohair dare, to all of the contrast color rows during the tiny bobbles section. Row five, right side, using contrast color, knit two, slip, slip, knit. Slip one with yarn in back, Knit yarn over knit to last five stitches. Slip one with yarn in back. Knit yarn over, knit into the same stitch. Slip one with yarn in back. Knit yarn over knit, and then take it off the needle. Slip with yarn in back. Knit one, leave it on the needle. Yarn over, knit one into the same stitch. Slip one with yarn in back, knit yarn over knit. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, slip one with yarn in back, knit one, leave it on the needle, yarn over, knit into the same stitch, resulting in three stitches coming from one stitch. Slip one with yarn in back, knit, yarn over, knit into the same stitch. Slip one with yarn in back. Knit, yarn over, knit. Slip one with yarn in back. Knit, yarn over, knit. Slip 
slip one with yarn in back, knit yarn over knit all the way to the last five stitches. When you reach the last five stitches and do the final knit yarn over knit, slip one with yarn in back and knit one. Slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. One stitch was decreased at the beginning of the row. Turn to work row six, wrong side, and we'll do a decrease at the beginning of this row too. Knit two, slip, slip, knit. Slip one with yarn in back. So keep the yarn in back to slip that main color stitch. Knit three together through the back loop, slip one with yarn in back to last three stitches. Knit these three contrast color stitches together through the back loop like this. Insert the right needle tip through all three stitches to knit three together. Slip one with yarn in back, so the yarn is always in the back of the work during this row. Knit three together through the back loop. Slip with yarn in back, knit three together through the back loop. Slip with yarn in back, knit three together. If it feels a little bit tight when you insert the right needle, you can pull on the stitches a bit to make them looser. And as you wrap the yarn around, it'll be easier to pull it through if you loosen them up first. Slip one with yarn in back, knit three together through the back loop. Slip one with yarn in back, knit three together through the back loop. If you're doing the mohair dare, just be careful that you get all of the strands of yarn and you don't split the work too much, split the yarn too much. So it might help you to loosen them up first and then you can knit those three together through the back loop. Pointy needles also help with this knit three together technique. If you have very blunt needles, it might be a little bit more difficult. Slip one with yarn in back, knit three together through the back loop. Slip one with yarn in back. Another thing that helps me with this technique is I keep the stitches close to my needle tips. So that I'm just using the tips of my needles to do that. Knit three together through the back loop. Slip one with yarn in back. Knit three together through the back. Keep on going to last three stitches and then you'll slip the last three with yarn in front. At the end of row six, when you do the final slip one with yarn in back, when you do that final slip one with yarn in back, bring the yarn forward after that to slip three with yarn in front. So that's how you do the slip one with yarn in back and then slip three with yarn in front. Let's do that one more time for you English style knitters, holding the yarn in your right hand. Slip one with yarn in back, bring the yarn forward to slip three with yarn in front. That's the end of row six. And one thing to mention in the pattern, you're decreasing one stitch at each edge. And whenever you do that knit yarn over knit, you're technically increasing two stitches for every other stitch, but uh, it's just one edge decrease. It's only one stitch decreased at the edge because then on the wrong side, you're doing that knit three together to get rid of those extra stitches. So keep on following. Now you have, again, one stitch, just like you had for one stitch below. 
down here with the main color. So you increased on the right side and then you decreased right away on the wrong side. Row seven using main color. Just drop the contrast color, we're done with that. Uh, but carry it along the edge as you stripe colors. So we don't need to break the yarn. Row seven using main color, knit two, slip, slip, knit. Knit to last three stitches. We are going to work four rows, rows seven, eight, nine, and 10 four rows with the main color in stockinette stitch. So it's going to look just like those four rows from below. Smooth stockinette stitch with the main color. Pay close attention to your knits and purls during rows seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then you're going to repeat rows five through 10 of pattern repeat to get three total tiny bobble stripes. These are all of the techniques you need to know to knit this tiny bobbles section. So keep on going and I'll show you what that looks like. These are the completed tiny bobbles after repeating the tiny bobbles pattern repeat. So these are rows 22. Row 22 is completed with three tiny bobbles stripes. And I held my mohair dare together with my contrast color. If you did that, you can break your mohair break that strand of mohair. We're gonna keep using the contrast color. So if you held a strand of mohair together with your contrast color, go ahead and break that off. And I'm gonna use my main color and contrast color as written for the slip stitch triangles. Row 23, right side, using contrast color. Knit two, slip, slip, knit. knit 15, slip one with yarn in back to last three stitches. So knit two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then slip one with yarn in back. It's very important for this section to know that every time you slip stitches on the right side, it's slipping the yarn with yarn in back. And on this section, every time you slip on the wrong side, you slip with yarn in front. So follow the rows very closely. We're, we will be working two rows with each color, carrying the colors along the edge while you stripe your yarns. We're gonna be slipping stitches when you work with the main color and with the contrast color to create this beautiful mosaic slip stitch effect. So always slip with yarn in back on the right side and always slip with the yarn in front on the wrong side. Follow the rows closely and then I'll show you what this section looks like. This is the end of row 23, knit 15, slip one with yarn in back to last three stitches. So you slipped one with yarn in back and then just bring the yarn forward to slip three with yarn in front. So you slip with yarn in back and then the last three are with yarn in front. So what I said before about always slipping with yarn in back on the right side, that's for all of these body stitches, but the I cords are always slipped with yarn in front. So do exactly what the rows say. And then I wanna show you the row 24, wrong side, knit two, slip, slip, knit with the contrast color. And then we're going to do some knits and purls. So start with a purl one, knit 13, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, purl one, Slip one with yarn in front, purl one, knit 13, purl one to last three stitches. So slip the same stitch, but remember to always slip with yarn in front on the wrong side. Purl one, take the yarn to the back to knit 13.
after you knit 13, purl one, and repeat those instructions inside the parentheses to last three stitches. Slip, purl, knit 13, purl. So always slip this same stitch, purl one, knit 13, purl one. Keep on going, paying close attention to your knits and purls, and then you'll do two rows with the main color. Working two rows main color, two rows contrast color, two rows main color, two rows contrast color, and then we'll be surprised with a beautiful triangular formation coming soon. This is what section nine is looking like with the tiny bobbles and those slip stitches. Pay close attention to those slip stitch rows and you'll get this beautiful triangle shape with those slip stitches and some garter stitch and follow your repeat rows closely. After the slip stitch section, you'll be doing another repeat of those tiny bobbles, repeating the tiny bobbles pattern repeat three more times right here. That was rows 43 through 60 using the same techniques with the tiny bobbles. I held my mohair, glow hair dare, my mohair dare together with my contrast color for those tiny bobbles and you can see just a little subtle halo, and those bobbles are extra plump, thanks to that mohair dare. And then you repeat the slip stitch section, the slip stitch triangles, rows 61 through 76. This is what the edge looks like of those fun slip stitches. And then I repeated the tiny bobbles. So follow that written pattern closely, there are some decreases as well. There was that knit two together decrease row. So pay close attention to your stitch count at any time after any of these sections. If you count your stitches and you're one or two stitches off, just sneak in an extra increase or decrease to get back on track. All right, I just worked row 95 and I have 18 stitches. So this is what it looks like after completing the tiny bobbles. That final repeat of the tiny bobbles, you're gonna do the contrast color, main color stripe. Contrast color, main color, and then just rows five and six of the tiny bobbles once more. So after you do that tiny bobbles, rows five and six, you do row 95, and that's what it looks like. Working the knit two togethers across row 95. I have 18 stitches on my needle, and let's finish these rows of the section. Row 96, wrong side, knit two, slip slip knit, purl two together five times, one, two, three, four, five, purl one, slip three with yarn in front. You should have 12 stitches on your needle. Row 97, right side, knit two, slip slip knit, Knit two together twice. One, two. Knit one, slip three with yarn in front. You should have nine stitches on your needle. Row 98, wrong side. Knit two, slip slip knit. Purl two together, slip three with yarn in front. You should have seven stitches on your needle. Row 99, knit two, slip slip knit, six stitches remain. Three on the right needle, three on the left needle. Break the main color, leaving an eight inch tail about that long or so. 
place the first three stitches on your right needle. They're are already there. And the last three stitches, they should be on your left needle, right there, with the purl bumps facing each other. So you want the purl bumps facing each other, and then you have to take the left needle out and put it back in like this. So the purl bumps are facing each other like this, and we're ready to graft the six stitches together using a tapestry needle. This is the same technique that we did on the previous section. So go through the first stitch on the front needle purlwise and leave it on. Go through the first stitch on the back needle knitwise, leave it on. Now go through the front needle stitch knitwise off and the next front needle stitch purlwise, leave it on. The back needle purlwise off. The next back needle stitch, go through it as if to knit and leave it on. The front needle, knitwise off, purlwise, leave it on. Back needle, purlwise off, knitwise, leave it on. Go through the front needle stitch, knitwise, the back needle stitch, purlwise. That is the end of this section, and you can go on the wrong side and weave in those ends. I just go through any of these little main color strands of yarn on the wrong side using a little whip stitch. You can use any method you like to weave in your ends, but this works just fine. And a couple more, there we go. You could do a few more if you want to be safe, but that's enough. But just to be safe, I'll do a few more. Weave in that end. You can also take some time now to weave in any of your other ends to the shawl. So maybe you have a contrast color end to weave in just look at the wrong side and you can do a little whip stitch to weave in your ends to keep it nice and tidy. This is what the completed section nine looks like with that beautiful little tiny bobbles. We have some of these triangles with slip stitches, two sections of that. And it's such a fun construction because we decreased. I rarely do this construction, but here's what the orientation is when you're knitting that section. You're looking at it from here, from the pickup, and here you can visualize. If you're watching this before knitting the section to see what it looks like, this is what the finished section nine looks like. I did the mohair dare with a coordinating color of mohair held together with my contrast color in all of these tiny bobble sections. And I only used about four grams of mohair. So I have a lot left over for an optional border. And this is what it looks like. If you want to weave in any other ends, you can go ahead and do that, especially if you see any holes or spaces in your knitting. There's a little gap there that I see. So you can use the ends to hide any little spaces that occur. So just go along the wrong side and you can close up. There was that little space from the, from the pickup. So just weave in your ends, take some time to tidy your knitting, and then there's going to be an optional border. So you may have some remaining yarn left over from your GoGo -Go Dynamo shawl. I have about half of my contrast color remaining, and I used a mohair dare for those brioche bits instead of my contrast color. This is about how much yarn I would have used for that contrast color. So you might have even extra yarn and we can apply that to an optional border, but that's totally optional. This is the recommended shawl I recommend you to make with sections one through nine, and this would be your border and you could block the shawl and you could pin out this border to exaggerate those scallops and you can have a finished shawl right now 
but if you have extra yarn, I have about, oh, I think I have at least 30 grams remaining of my main color, about 50 grams remaining of my contrast color. You might have even more yarn remaining if you have generous yardage or an extra color. You might have some extra mohair. So next I'm gonna show you, we'll do a pickup along the border, which is totally optional, but follow the yardage notes in the pattern for section 10 to see if you have enough yarn to do an optional border. If you want a really big schlank it, then you can utilize all your leftover yarn and you can make a really big optional border, but it's not necessary. This is the final shawl sections and the final border, but if you wanna add an extra wavy border, there's some instructions for section 10 to do that. Section 10 wavy border. We're looking at our knitting like this and we're gonna pick up and knit stitches to make an optional border. This uses both the main color and contrast color. Starting with the contrast color and we're gonna do some similar stripes like the semicircles. Four rows of the contrast color in stockinette stitch, four rows of the main color in reverse stockinette stitch. If you wanna use a mohair dare, you could use a mohair instead of your contrast color or instead of your main color as well. Or you could hold the mohair together with your color for either color to add a little bit of fluff to the border. This is your final opportunity to customize your colors and make a really special finish to the shawl. And pay close attention to the yardage notes in the pattern as well so that uh, you can have enough yarn of each color to do as many stripes as you want, leaving enough yarn recommended in the pattern to bind off with an I-cord bind off. Row one right side, using contrast color, pick up and knit three stitches from the I-cord cast on corner of section eight, right here. So look at your work like this. This is the corner we're gonna pick up. After this, we're gonna be getting 18 stitches. So to know exactly where to start picking up, look at the wrong side and count these main color I-cord rows. Count to 18 from the first one that you see of the main color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's what we're gonna get next. So get the stitches, the row right before that. So when you count 18, get three strands of yarn from the cast on corner from the I cord. And that's going to continue from that cast on edge. We want them onto the left needle so that we can knit them. So get three strands picked up onto the left needle like that. Row one using contrast color, pick up and knit those three. Make one. Pick up and knit four from the main color I-cord edge of section eight. Do this along the wrong side of the I-cord edge so that stitch that rolls toward the wrong side get both legs of that stitch until you have four stitches picked up and knitted from the I-cord edge. Knit one yarn over 10 times from the main color I-cord edge. Knit one, pick up and knit one, yarn over. Pick up and knit one, yarn over. 10 times. Three, four, If you hold the yarn in your right hand, here is the fifth time, yarn over, pick up and knit one, yarn over, that's the sixth time. Ooh. This is the seventh time. And 
keep on going till you do it 10 total times. This was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Pick up and knit four more stitches along the main color selvage. Along the main color I-cord edge. Now we have an asterisk to start this repeat. We're going to pick up and knit two from the, cast, from the contrast color I-cord edge. There's three stitches. Do you see one, two, three? Just get the first one and the third one. It doesn't matter, get any two stitches from the contrast color. One, two. Pick up and knit four from the main color I-cord edge. One, two, three, four. Pick up and knit one yarn over 10 times from the main color I-cord edge. One yarn over. Two yarn over. Three yarn over. Four yarn over. Five yarn over. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10. Pick up and knit four from the main color I cord edge. Two, three, and four. That should be the last main color stitch. If you're getting off and it feels like you're running out of the main color, you could go into the same stitch again if that's your last one and you need to get that fourth stitch. So whatever you need to do, just get the number of stitches along the main color edge that the pattern instructs, and then repeat from asterisk 18 more times. Picking up and knitting two from the contrast color, you can get the first one and the third one of those contrast color stitches. Get two from the contrast color, and then you get four from the main color. Pick up and knit one yarn over 10 times, and then get the last four of the main color. Two from the contrast color, four, pick up and knit one yarn over 10 times, four. Repeat, get two, get four, knit one yarn over 10 times, four. Repeat, two, four, knit one yarn over 10 times, four. You're gonna do that all the way until you reach the end of this edge. Getting a lot of stitches. Once you reach this corner, that will be the end of the repeat. Repeating from the asterisk 18 more times. Keep on going and you'll stop here at this other corner. So don't keep going, don't go along this edge. That's the wingspan edge of the shawl. So stop where I'm pinching it right here. Keep on picking up stitches. I just did the knit one yarn over 10 times for the final time. So now I'm reaching the end of the section eight edge. It looks like this. This was the final repeat over here. I just finished my last yarn over and I need to pick up and knit four more. This is the final line of the repeat instructions. Pick up and knit four from the main color I-cord edge. And that was repeating from asterisk 18 more times, make one. So at the very end of the row, do a final make one. Turn to work the wrong side, row two. You should have 603 stitches on your needle. Row two, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches from the I-cord bound off corner of section eight, right here. So this is the bind off from section eight. Get any three strands of yarn along this I-cord corner. 
So we're going to continue from this I-cord edge, get those three stitches picked up onto the left needle so you can knit them. Any three strands of yarn at that I-cord corner. Pick up and knit three. Purl to last three stitches. Row three, right side. You're going to need two stitch markers, one for the beginning and one for the end of the row. Knit three. Make one using the backwards loop cast on method. Place marker onto the right needle. Knit to last three stitches. And then you're going to place marker followed by a make one at the end of the row. <clears throat> so when you reach the final three stitches of the right side row, you'll have three stitches remaining. Place a marker onto your right needle, do a make one increase, and then slip the last three with yarn in front. Keep on following rows three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You're going to do four rows with the contrast color and then four rows of the main color using the stockinette stitch and reverse stockinette stitch textures just like we did for the semicircles like this. I just finished row eight using the main color. I have four rows contrast color, four rows main color. Row nine right side using contrast color. Knit three. Make one using the backwards loop cast on. Knit to marker. When you reach the stitch marker, slip the marker onto the right needle. If you lost track of your marker, it should be three stitches after the make one. Make one, knit three, and then slip the marker. This is the first time you work row nine. Knit two together four times. One, two, three, four. Knit three. One, two, three. Knit one yarn over eight times. Knit one yarn over twice, three times, four times, five, knit one yarn over six times, knit one yarn over seven, and knit one yarn over eight times. Knit three, knit two together four times. One, two, three, four. Repeat from the asterisk until you reach the next stitch marker. So you're going to do that all the way until you reach the end of the row. Knit two together four times, knit three, knit one yarn over eight times, knit three, knit two together four times. Keep on repeating that all the way to the ask, all the way to the marker. Four more of these knit two togethers. So in total, there should be eight knit two togethers. We had those last four and four more. Knit three, knit one yarn over eight times. Keep on following row nine closely. Row 10, 11, and 12 are also with the contrast color, purling on the wrong side, knitting on the right side, to create another stockinette stitch for row stripe using the contrast color. Keep on going and you can weigh your yarn as you knit,
Before you do a stripe, you could weigh your yarn and see how many grams you have, and then work four rows, and then see how much yarn you have remaining. And then you'll know that you might need 10 grams, or 12 grams, or 13 grams to do a four row stripe. And that will help you determine how many repeats you can do. You should have enough to do at least a couple main color stripes. I should have enough to do three main color stripes with my yarn that's remaining. But if you want to use an extra color, you could make your border longer, or you could throw in a little bit of mohair to substitute one of the colors to make that border even longer. And this is just an optional extra section, this whole border. So if you want to do it just really small, just a couple repeats, that's fine. But if you want to make six stripes of each color, if you have a lot of extra yarn or other colors you want to add to your border, then you can repeat the rows 5 through 12 of the pattern repeat as many times as you like to customize your border size. Keep on going. I just completed my wavy border and I chose to do three total main color stripes and three contrast color stripes. Make sure you weigh your yarn as you knit the border to make sure that you don't run out of yarn so you can determine how many stripes to knit. If you have more yarn remaining, you could do more stripes by just repeating rows 5 through 12 of the pattern repeat. So keep on going to customize the length of your border. Or you could also bind off early after any main color stripe. I-cord bind off. Bind off all stitches on the next right side row using an I-cord bind off. I recommend using the contrast color. My contrast color is still attached and I broke my main color. I'm done with my orange. So start the I-cord bind off after completing a repeat of row eight with the main color. So with contrast color, I'm going to hold one strand of mohair, West Wool Glow Hair, together with my contrast color in a coordinating color. You could do a brand new color, or you could even try the bind off in only mohair to have a fluffy I-cord bind off. So get creative with your I-cord bind off. You could do some stripes in your I-cord bind off, but I'm gonna use the contrast color. Next row, right side, using contrast color, knit two, and then knit two together through the back loop. Slip three stitches onto left needle. Repeat from asterisk until six final stitches remain. Knit two, knit two together through the back. Slip three stitches onto left needle, knit two, knit two together through the back. Keep on doing this until you have these three stitches remaining and the last three I-cord stitches remaining for six total stitches. Make sure you don't bind off too tight or too loose, and you can remove the stitch markers when you reach them. If you're a tight knitter, you might want to go up one needle size to do the bind off to make sure that your I-cord isn't too tight, but bind off some stitches with your normal tension and then give it a little pull test. And if it doesn't move at all, if it feels super, super, super tight, then maybe try knitting a little looser or going up one needle size. And you also don't want it to look too sloppy or too loose. So it should look like this nice and tidy. It should look pretty similar to your I-cord edge of your shawl. So keep on going with your I-cord bind off. Knit two, knit two together through the back, slip three onto left needle. Holding the yarn in your right hand, knit two, knit two together through the back, Slip three stitches onto left needle. Here is the final GoGo Dynamo shawl. I finished all the sections and did my big wavy border. I did three stripes of my main color for my border. If you've got more yarn during the wavy border, you can knit as many stripes as you like 
to make the shawl as big and wavy as you want. If you didn't do that wavy border, you can stop early and have a smaller shawl and your border will finish with that fun short row wedge section. And that's if you don't have as much yarn or if you just wanna stop early and have a smaller shawl, that's gonna make a beautiful finished edge with that I-cord edge to your shawl. And if you have a little bit of leftover yarn and you want that short row edge to be your final border, you could add a little tassel or some fringe to the edge of your shawl. Maybe a little tassel at the point of each main color short row wedge in the center. Could look really fun to have a little festive finish to your shawl but I'm so happy with the fun geometric explosion of this shawl, lots of texture going on and a really unique construction. I, one of my favorite parts was picking up stitches and decreasing to the top center. It really has that sprint to the finish mentality at the end of that section. And share your photos, share all your progress and add all your customization notes of where you added your mohair so we can get inspired by each other. And uh, if you love knitting the shawl, you could even knit another one later on in the season and incorporate some of those fun color ideas or mohair modifications that you saw from our other knitters. So on my mohair dares, I used it in the brioche section and in that little tiny bobble section. And I have a little fluffy mohair dare bind off. So even if you've just got a little bit of mohair left, you could hold a strand of mohair together with your contrast color for that final I-cord bind off. And there is that finished shawl. I just got to weave in a few more ends and then it's ready to wear out, wear outside and layer it with all my favorite sweaters. I love how this orange is popping with that lilac. So let me know how you wear your shawl. I like to bunch them up like a scarf like this. So all the sections and textures cascade into each other. It's a really great arched shape when you just wear it like a classic drape style over the shoulders. It has a beautiful arch and then you can just show off all of those cool lines and textural details. Super fun. I love the impact of this. It's got this beautiful uh, geometric inspiration and some of the wavy moments uh, just remind me of really relaxing uh, just really relaxing shapes and geometric formations. It was so fun to design this because as I was knitting it, I didn't know exactly where it was going. So that same experience you had when you're knitting the shawl of, I wonder what's going to happen next. Where is he taking us? Those are the same questions I had in my head when I was knitting the first sections. I just made some nice shapes and then thought, where could it go? Do I want to do something simple or something a little bit more intricate? And I just let go uh, and let the knitting journey take me to where it went. So I took my notes, wrote it down for this pattern for you, and I just can't wait to see all your finished Go Go Dynamo shawls. So thanks for participating in this knit along. I hope you had a really fun time. And if you've not quite finished yet, or if you're still behind on some of the sections, just go at your own pace knit some other projects in between, pick this project up in the meantime, and eventually you'll get it done for this beautiful finished shawl. And after this, we're gonna do another mystery knit along next year, but in the meantime, we're gonna have a hybrid knit along. So stay tuned on the West Knits newsletter at westknits.com, and we'll announce around November time all of those details for our winter hybrid knit along. It'll be another beautiful shawl, um, not a mystery shawl, but you'll get to see the finished shawl before you participate. And it's going to be a beautiful, large, wintry, uh, frosty shawl. So I hope you'll join me for the hybrid knit along this season and keep on sharing those Go Go Dynamo shawl works in progress and finished photos.